Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Vincent Ennis. I make, uh, start over. Today, I wanna show you how you can better take advantage of the Blackmagic ecosystem, specifically with the ATEM line of switchers. So what we're working with today is the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. And this particular switcher is the, the new um, SDI version, okay? And I wanna show you kind of how you can use this, and this will go for the ATEM Mini Extreme, ATEM Mini Extreme Pro ISO, or any of the new ATEM SDI versions. I'm recording in camera where the wireless go to and I'm using let's go over here to the camera gear so this is kind of a typical setup how you would maybe set it up at your church so I've got a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and this same setup would go whether you've got the Pocket 6K the Pocket 6K2 there's some great advantages of using the Studio 4K um, all that is being recorded so in camera we're using a Samsung T7 to record in camera. I've got a Panasonic, Panasonic 25 millimeter lens, prime, I'm using today. I believe it's a 1.8. And how this all happens is using the Blackmagic Designs. They came out with this, I believe a couple years ago, the bi-directional SDI converter. What this allows you to do is take the HDMI signal from the pocket, send an out, I'm sorry, bring the program in that's what it uses for camera control, as well as send an SDI out to the switcher. Now, one more piece of tech that I've got in this chain is the Blackmagic SDI distribution. The reason I have that is I take my program output, which is what is required for camera control, out of the ATEM switcher into the SDI distribution. That allows me to just send this feed to several different boxes. So let's jump in the software and kind of talk about some things and take you through the edit process from start to finish of how you might could use this in your workflow. All right guys, so here we are on the camera control page. We've got the, the usual suspects. You've got your color wheel where you can change any of the colors. You've got your gain, your shutter. I'm recording this particular video 30 frames per second, so twice the shutter would be 160. And then my white balance. Um, if you were to open the color wheel, you can change things like contrast. If you wanted a little bit more contrast, let's show you that, or a little less contrast. Okay, we'll put it back where that was. Saturation, you've got saturation controls. And I've kind of already set this where I want it. You've got your shadows. Let's show you that. Okay, that's the shadows, the lower part. The midtones, they call that gamma. And then we have gain. Okay, so there's our gain controls. Now what's really nice about this feature is you could tweak this to be whatever you'd like it to be if you needed to turn up your whites or needed to do something specific to get your camera right. And what's interesting is all this can be copied and saved. So we'll go over here, we'll hit this button here, and we'll copy this camera. Now let's assume you wanted all of your cameras to take this. Well, you could simply hit this button here and hit paste to all, and it'll ask you, you go up here to your camera control and you can see that now all four cameras are exactly the same. Now, well, let's say this, let's say camera four, you want this particular gain and the white balance is the same, but you need a more lift. And there's a lot of configurations in here, right? That you would want saved for your Sunday service. Once you've got your cameras configured how you wanted, this is another powerful feature that I don't see taken advantage of. You could simply save all that Right, so go to File, Save As, and I've already created one. Um, pick where you want to, save this. Um, in this instance, uh, we'll call it, we'll call it Sunday 2, right? I've got Sunday 2 saved to my desktop. Well, let's just do Sunday Test, right? So we know which one this is. Sunday 2, or so, I'm sorry, Sunday Test, saved to the desktop. So I hit Save, select all, save, now, if someone comes in here and monkeys with our camera and you see that I'm all out of focus or I'm totally blown out, you, you could go to your, let's just 
close this out, right? So close out the ATEM software. We can open it up, ATEM software control, right? From any computer that's connected to your network, that's connected to your switcher, we could go to restore. And remember, we saved it on our desktop and we called it Sunday 2. So we simply have to find that file that's called Sunday 2 and then reload it. All right, HI, let's see, where are you? There it is, Sunday test, I'm sorry. Hit restore, select all, and boom, we're back, right? So that's another advantage of using just something very simple that's built into every ATEM switcher, okay? We also have, I didn't mention this earlier, we've got autofocus, right? So it does a quick snapback. We also have manual focus. So if you wanted to pull focus, you could pull, I'm actually looking at my monitor trying to pull focus. This is focused by wire with this particular camera. So, you know, it's not as sharp as it would be if I was using something like a cinema lens like I had in my previous uh, video which, by the way, that could also be controlled remotely from the operator station. Um, so the, there's that feature. But what also is incredibly helpful and interesting to me, there's a 20-slide media player. So if you're not using ProPresenter and you just wanted a slide to recall, we could call up uh, our Cross Church logo, and we'll hit the Still button, and we'll put that to... There we go. So we can fade that back. We know that that feature's been available for a while, but here's something else that's pretty interesting that doesn't get talked about very much. Um, the ISO recording, right? So let's talk about the ISO recording. What's pretty nice about the ISO line of switchers that's a little bit different than the A10 Mini Pro is not only do you have a recording that I showed you earlier, uh, re recording your program, you also get an individual recording of every camera. And it's also, they don't tell you this in the literature, the recording inside the ISO recording is HyperDeck High by default. But if you have this checked, this record in all cameras, let's pull this up now. Okay. So if you have this checked, record in all cameras, it will automatically record whatever resolution, and in my case, it's a 4K file to each individual cameras for edits later. It also includes a DaVinci Resolve file inside the, um, the main program out recording. And we'll jump into that and show you just how that could be helpful for your church. Um, we're gonna go there right now and kind of show you the next step after recording. All right, so now I've plugged in the file, the hard drive, rather, that was plugged into the ATEM switcher, which is this T7 Shield. We're gonna open that up, and in it you'll see all the different takes. I, if you, quick tip, if you don't renumber the takes, it just creates duplicates next to it with the number. So the last take I did was Blackmagic Ecosystem Take 4. So we're gonna click that, and I'm gonna show you just how easily this integrates into DaVinci Resolve. So you'll notice immediately it not only launches the program, you'll see that there's a copy of the original file in here, okay? If we go to the edit page, you can see all the cuts we made across, and then you can change the cuts. Let's see here, like here's a cut, let's go to a cut. You could recut it. Um, you can go up here to hit the cut tab and hit the sync bin and you'll see all four camera angles and you can easily swap them out anywhere in time. Um, there's tons of videos on that. I'm not gonna get real deep in the weeds, but all this is just a byproduct of using the ATEM stuff, ATEM software together. But what's really interesting about this and that's really helpful for post-production work, let's say you've got a worship song that you wanna put out in 4K, right? Since remember we recorded in camera with all our cameras, we can easily swap those files out. And I'll show you how. Here's how to do it. So you see there's a Blackmagic RAW folder here, and here's all our ISO recordings with our camera, our media player. They're all right here. But if you look in the Blackmagic folder, there's nothing there because we actually have to tell, um, tell the project where they're at. So it's real simple. 
go down to the hard drive or hard drives that you use to record your project in camera. Or if you're using an SD card, the same thing would apply. I know that it's the Blackmagic Ecosystem Take 4 Cam 1 B-RAW. Now you can only do this with Blackmagic RAW files, which is fine because we're using DaVinci Resolve, right? So there's camera one. I used two cameras today, and I do know there's camera two. Blackmagic Ecosystem Take 4 Camera 2. So we're going to drag those into our RAW files. Now, at a touch of a button, you'll see these are our ISO files. So we would make all our cuts and all our edits. And right when we were done with all our edits and we're ready to color the footage, we come up here to the timeline and we just simply say, switch to camera originals. Select that. Voila. You see the grayscale popped up. We could come in here, make tweaks to our look familiar right from the ATEM software, very similar. You've got, let's say you wanted to change some color and we wanted to use um, a different color science. You see, you could go in here and color your image, whatever. We're just gonna use something generic so they all match. We'll just use the black magic designs. Oh, let's go with black magic designs. Let's do the, uh, I'll tell you what, let's use the Rec 709 LUT that I have. We'll use that for all of them. So we'll do our natural Rec 709. Boom. And then we, let's say, you know, let's tweak that footage. Let's bring our gain up a bit, right? Let's bring up the shadows a bit, pull out a little bit of saturation. You get the idea, right? Go back to the color tab and go, yeah, we like the way that looks. And we, and then when you're done, this is another, you, you've already, now look, all your edits stay. All the edits, they've just, all the files have just been replaced with the B-RAW files. Um, you would need to color each file, I didn't do that. All right, so once you get done with your color and you go to the render tab, you've got several options to choose from. You have, oh, let me get it over here. You have, you know, just some custom formats and Premiere and lots of things up there. You know, let's just title this test one Instagram. Okay, so what you'll notice here is you have um, what's new in Resolve um, 18.2 is you have formats for vertical resolution. So there's one that's 1280 by 720. That would probably be Instagram. We can add that to our resolution. Let's say we needed to do another one that was 1080 by 1080 square. We can add that to our resolution, right? And then we did, let's say we're going to do one in Ultra HD, right? So we did 1380, 40 by 2160 Ultra HD. We'll add that to the render queue. Now, if you've noticed, we have three different versions of the same file that could easily be rendered out. So we're going to hit Render All. And it's going to render all three of these jobs. And now, with just a few clicks, you've created Instagram, uh, YouTube Shorts, all that using software that comes free and that works extremely well with the Blackmagic switchers. And you'll see that we have test and then test Instagram. So there's the, the full HD or the Ultra HD version. And then this one is our square aspect version. I hope this was helpful for you guys. And um, let me know in the comments down below if there's anything I can do or answer. I know I kind of went through some of this stuff fast and there's quite a bit here, but I'd like to know what you guys would like me to unpack. Hopefully this was helpful and gives you some ideas and some helpful tips how you can better use your equipment in church.